In the previous modules, we've looked at a pursuer target engagement where the target is non-maneuvering. We assumed that the angles of the engagement were small. We defined Z1 as the relative position and Z2 as the relative velocity. This was confined to the vertical plane given that the small angle assumption was made. And also we're making a perfect acceleration response, meaning that whatever control we derive, we're able to instantaneously achieve that uh, as it specifies at that time. Optimization problem statement that we solved was to find the control that minimized this cost function subject to the kinematics where we define the terminal cost matrix QF uh, as B and C on the diagonal and then a time to go variable was also introduced. The general solution is a feedback law based off of the kinematic states Z1 and Z2 with parameters B and C from the terminal cost matrix and the independent variable time to go. So we want to check our result and we have this from the literature while ours differs so we can manipulate our results until we hopefully get what's in the literature. So factoring things out, canceling coefficients, multiplying by 12 over 12, C over C, bringing those terms into the numerator and denominator, and again, factoring and manipulating until we get what is published. So we verify that our derivation is consistent with what's in the literature and therefore likely correct. So if we take our optimal control result and define a time varying gain, call it n tilde, and a new state variable, essentially what's in the braces of u star on the numerator, then we can write u star in a form that's like zero effort miss proportional navigation where the differences are that n tilde is a time varying navigation gain and z is kind of like zero effort miss but has these additional terms in parentheses. Now let's look at the case where we maximize intercept effort. Intercept meaning that z1 approaches zero or pursuer and target collide. Mathematically then we want to let the limit of the B term and the terminal cost matrix go to infinity while the C term goes to zero. So first taking the limit of C going to zero and now B going to infinity. The result is immediately identifiable as zero effort missed proportional navigation. Let's work this into another form based off of the line of sight rate, lambda dot. So recall our linearized engagement where all the angles are small. For example, we can take the tangent of the line of sight angle, sine over cosine, small angle approximation gives us Z1 over R. Now solving for Z1, And recalling that Z2 is just Z1 dot, and then applying the chain rule, and recalling that R dot is just minus the closing velocity, and that the range is closing velocity times time to go, we have an expression then for Z2. And in there is lambda dot. So let's solve for lambda dot. And substitute in for lambda z1 over r. To finally get an expression for lambda dot that's pretty close to what we have for u star. Notice that it only differs by a factor of three times the closing velocity. So multiplying lambda dot by three times the closing velocity gives us u star, and that's immediately recognizable as true proportional navigation, where apparently the optimal gain 
has a value of 3. We have just derived true proportional navigation from an optimization problem statement and also identified the optimal navigation gain as 3. This is a major result. I've mentioned that this is immediately recognizable as zero effort miss pronav. To see this, recall the formula for zero effort miss and then note it's in the parentheses in U star. Here it is, zero effort miss form of true pronav with the optimal gain three. So apparently the optimal navigation gain is three. And actually this compares with our previous nonlinear simulations in Missile Guidance Fundamentals, Section 3, Module 3. We had this head-on engagement where the pursuer only had an initial heading error, and we quantified control effort through simulation as the square integral of the pursuer acceleration. On the left-hand side, these efforts are tabulated against the navigation gain value. And for true proportional navigation, sure enough, we have that a navigation gain of three gave us the least control effort. This is consistent with our theoretical result. Let's take a look at another limiting case that leads to something called rendezvous guidance. Rendezvous meaning that as time to go approaches zero, the pursuer velocity approaches the target velocity. And in addition, we have intercept. This leads us to take limits as both B and C in the terminal cost matrix go to infinity. And to take these limits, we're going to use our original form of U star because it's easier. So there's the limit of C going to infinity and now the limit of B going to infinity. Simplifying. we get our result for rendezvous guidance. In summary, here are the main results of this section. The general optimal guidance law with a time varying navigation gain, the max intercept effort form of the optimal guidance law, which was shown to be true proportional navigation with an apparent optimal gain of three, and then rendezvous guidance, where intercept effort and velocity matching effort were taken to infinity. These results can all be viewed as closed loop feedback guidance, where measurements of the kinematics are fed into the guidance law, which provides a desired pursuer acceleration. This concludes the section.